was a record year for stock sales by corporate insiders. CEOs, executives, and board members sold over $170 billion of their corporate stock last year. That's according to data from Smart Insider. The sales were up 80% over 2020 and more than two and a half times their pre-pandemic levels. So let's look at the top five. Elon Musk was, as we know, the largest seller with over $16 billion. Jeff Bezos in second place at $10 billion. The Walton family selling nearly $8 billion of Walmart stock. Mark Zuckerberg cashing out $4.5 billion of shares in Meta. That was eight times his 2020 sales. And then we have Todd Crockett. He's a director of Zoom. He unloaded $3.2 billion in stock. A lot of that related to options. Some other notable sellers, Larry Ellison with $728 million. Mark Benioff of Salesforce selling over a half billion. A lot of that also options related. And Satya Nadella selling $374 million of Microsoft shares. That is more than half of his total stake. Now, the big question is whether all this insider selling signals a market top. Daniel Taylor of the Wharton School, who studies insider selling, says, quote, decades of research shows that corporate insiders are contrarians, buying near bottoms and selling near peaks. The sales may have also been driven by taxes, with investors trying to get ahead of any potentially higher tax rates this year. Folks, we're going to talk about something important here. Remember the emergency, quote unquote, that started back in 2020? Well, our beloved oligarchs got excited once the medical emergency hit because, hey, now that we have an emergency, we got to print trillions of dollars. God forbid the oligarchs allow any emergency to pass without robbing the taxpayer out of billions, if not trillions of dollars. And of course, the oligarchs ordered their puppets in the Federal Reserve to print trillions and trillions of dollars in what is now known as the cocaine operation. And that, of course, flowed all the way to the stock market, to the real estate market, pushing the value, the assets of the wealthy higher and higher and higher. So it is not a surprise that the billionaires in this country almost doubled their wealth since the so-called medical emergency started. And we saw the sales of luxury cars like Rolls Royce, for example, surging the best year ever. Likewise, we're seeing a severe shortage, not in bread or goods or houses for the poor or middle class, but a severe shortage in private jets and mega yachts for the super wealthy. They cannot find them anymore. They're selling like hot cakes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the roaring 20s once again for the rich not for you and I. And that leads us to the biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of humanity. No, we're not talking about 50 years ago or a thousand years ago. We're talking about today. It took place in the last two years and we're now starting to acknowledge and realize what just took place. The biggest Ponzi scheme in history. And we're talking about the stock market, of course. You see, the stock market today is not your father's stock market. You know, when you worked hard and you invested your money in the stock market in certain companies, and as these companies grew larger and wealthier, your investment also grew larger. And at some point, you can retire comfortably. This is not what the stock market is today. Today, the stock market is a large Ponzi scheme operation. Thank you to the Federal Reserve and the manipulation of the stock market, which is now a mere pump and dump scheme. Pumps and dumps all over the place. And who benefits? The rich, the corporate insiders. They get richer, they dump at the top, leaving the retail mom and pops who are chasing the lottery ticket holding the bag. And oh boy, these bags are getting larger and larger and larger. And of course, the Wall Street pumpers the banks, the CNBC and the likes, who continue to say, buy stocks, don't worry about anything. Stocks only go up. Don't worry about interest rates, hikes, and the Fed, and tightening, inflation. Who cares about all of that? The party in Wall Street is not over yet. On the other hand, the rich clients of these Wall Street banks have been dumping more than ever, selling stock more than ever. Matter of fact, so far, 
In 2021 alone, the top corporate insiders dumped over $160 billion worth of stocks. And we've been talking in this channel that this is a sign that the stock market is about to collapse. The insiders, the 1%, the oligarchs, they don't dump because the stock market is about to go higher. They dump because they know that the stock market is going to go down. How? Because the Fed, their puppet, informed them ahead of time with an advance warning that they're about to remove the so-called accommodation from the cocaine operation due to inflation. And of course, the result of all of that is lower stock market. Now, another sinister behavior in the Sponzi scheme is the practice of share buybacks, which should be outlawed by the way because the corporations use the cash not to invest in research and development or hire more people to expand they use the cash to buy back their stocks to push the value of their equity higher so they can dump at a higher price by using the cash generated from the company's operations. So forget about the shareholders, forget about the stakeholders, forget about everybody. This is a criminal practice intended to make corporate insiders richer and everybody else poorer. Yet it continues to go on. Why? Because these rich corporate insiders bought your beloved politicians who allow this criminal practice of share buybacks to continue to go on. And as you can see, share buybacks surged in the last two years, hand in hand with the cocaine operation by the no wonder why the stock market went bananas in an irrational super bubble that fooled and lured the majority of retail mom and pop investors in the trap. Now, I don't want to talk about the usual oligarchs, the big tech oligarchs that you and I are familiar with, because as you've seen from the intro of this video, they've been dumping billions and billions and billions of dollars. For example, Facebook oligarch Mark Zuckerberg has been dumping stock last year pretty much every single day, billions and billions and billions of dollars. Now, do yourself a favor and pull up Facebook's chart so you can understand why Mark Zuckerberg has been dumping billions of dollars last year. And of course, by dumping billions of dollars in fake money, he turned that into real money, then used it to scoop up land. You know, real assets, not fake assets like stocks and cryptos and tulips and NFTs and garbage. And he scooped up thousands of acres worth of land, specifically in Hawaii. Likewise, oligarch Bezos from Amazon has been dumping billions and billions and billions of dollars turning that paper wealth into real wealth, real money. And he used that money to scoop up a massive real estate portfolio. And you might have heard about his uh, massive super yacht that is so large, they have to dismantle the historic bridge over the Netherlands so the super yacht can pass. And of course, executives from Apple, like Tim Cook, for example, dumped hundreds of millions worth of stock right at the top. Likewise, Microsoft CEO dumped half of his entire holdings in Microsoft stock right at the top before the stock took a massive leg down. But I want to do something different here and look at stocks that absolutely crashed from the top down over 50%. And I want you to notice how the insiders from these companies sold right at the top. And we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. And once again, the biggest Ponzi scheme in history. <laughs> And let's start by this one, Coinbase. Remember that one? In this channel, we made a video when the IPO happened. And we said it's going to be a trap. Avoid. Don't invest. This is an extreme valuation. The company will never live up to the valuation. Yada, yada, yada. Nobody listened. Everybody bought. You don't understand, bro. Coinbase is the future. Okay. Well, we have Coinbase director Fred Ersam III. By the way, ladies, if the guy has the third in his name, that means daddy's loaded. He's rich. And no, we're not talking about the tender swindler either. Because Mr. The Third dumped over $457 million last year. Oh yeah, this is real money, baby. And it doesn't stop here. The CEO of Coinbase also dumped hundreds of millions of dollars and used that money to buy a cool $133 million mansion in Bel Air. Meanwhile, you had you bought Coinbase at the top, yet down a cool 60 3%. Another one, a tragic one. Uh, we made a video about this and we covered all the details. But here it is, Peloton. Disgraced CEO John Foley dumped almost a hundred million dollars last year worth of Peloton stock. Yeah, make it rain, baby. And it gets even better. Director Bill Lynch dumped over a hundred and nine million dollars. 
Meanwhile, you, and by you I mean Mama Kathy Wood, if you bought Peloton right at the top, you're down, oh, about 87%. Whoops. How about a firm? We have uh, Silvia Martinsevic. Is that Bosnian? Croatian? Serbian? I don't know. Let's not start another war. We already have Russia, Ukraine. Anyways, she is the CCO of a firm, and she dumped last year $25 million worth of shares. Oh, yeah. And then we have uh, Libor Makelik, and this gentleman is a director at a firm. He also dumped $60 million last year worth of stock. On the other hand, you, had you bought the stock at the top, oh, you're down about 80%. Not bad, right? What about this one? AMC. Oh, yeah. The apes. Remember the apes? They're all dead now. Well, the CEO, Adam Aaron, a.k.a. the Silverback, you morons. Remember the Silverback? He knows he's going to make us rich. He actually made himself rich and got out because last year, Adam Aaron dumped $42 million worth of stock. On the other hand, you, the monkey head that you are, you're down 82% from the top. But hey, the short squeeze is coming. What about the ticker NET for Cloudfare? Well, CEO Matthew Prince, also known as the oldest 10 years old on the planet, well, he dumped $212 million worth of shares last year. Oh yeah, that's real money, baby. Show me the money. On the other hand, you... If you bought the stock at the top, oh, you're down about 60%. Hey, look at the AMC apes. They're down 82%. This is not bad. 60%. Think about it. Next, what about the ticker LMND for lemonade? You're better off investing in a real lemonade stand because the CEO, Daniel Schreiber, he dumped $47 million worth of stock. Oh, yeah. And then we have director Joel Coulter. He dumped $82 million worth of stock last year. On the other hand, you, had you bought the stock at the top, well, you're down about 86%. No biggie. What about Zoom? Remember Zoom? You gotta buy Zoom. The future is Zoom, right? Well, it was the future indeed for the CEO, of course. Eric Yuan, who dumped over $590 million worth of stock last year alone. Oh, yeah. We also have CFO Kelly Stickelberg, who dumped over $44 million worth of stock last year alone. On the other hand, you, if you bought the stock at the top, get down about 79%. How about Zillow? We have Rich Barton, who's an idiot at Zillow, you know, with the genius idea of let's buy homes. But regardless, who cares? He walked away rich because he dumped $85 million worth of stock last year. On the other hand, you, had you bought at the top, you're down about 78%. How about DraftKings? CEO Jason Robbins dumped over $96 million worth of stock last year. Oh yeah, hit him. And of course, he used the money to rent out the Pat Stadium for his wife's birthday. And I say, Mr. Robbins, be careful here because divorce is the ultimate margin call. And of course, DraftKings is growing. The large of online's betting in this country is growing larger and larger and larger. The problem is... The company is not profitable at all, and the reason is they continue to spend like a drunken sailor on ads and customer acquisition. And if you are the CEO of the company, who cares if the company is not profitable? Your job is to pump, 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 spend, 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 so the stock can move higher and higher and higher, attracting all of these retail mom and pop investors to invest in your company. And then you dump at the top, and you capture a cool 100 mil, and who cares what happens to the retail mom and pops, or to the company for that matter. Let it go bankrupt for all we care. And here's the sad part. If you bought DraftKings stock at the top, or oh, you're down about 77%. What about Robin Hood? The Hood. You know, the future, bro. Well, the CEOs, Bert and Ernie, they come in a package. They dumped over $14 million combined. On the other hand, you, by you we mean Mama Kathy Wood, if you bought at the top of Robin Hood stock, you're down about 89%. How about this company? The ticker LAZR for Luminar. Great company, promising perhaps. That doesn't mean you have to buy the stock because there is something we call uh, valuations and that tend to matter over time. Well, the CEO of Luminar, Austin Russell, 
who's a nice guy, by the way, a young guy, 26 years old. So we're not going to make fun of him. I mean, in all likelihood, he's richer than you and I combined because he dumped $220 million worth of stock. Oh, yeah. And he used the money to buy one of the coolest mansions in the outskirts of L.A. The mansion cost $7.3 million to build. Mr. Russell paid $83 million for the mansion. So obviously, he's uh, not so smart when it comes to real estate deals. But who cares? You just turned fake $220 million into real $220 million. Who cares? And the school mansion has six bedrooms and 13 bathrooms. So you have about two bathrooms for each bedroom. One for shitting, one for pissing, I assume. And hey, if you clog one of these toilets, you don't need to deal with it. No need to borrow the plunger from the Federal Reserve. Just clog Close the door, tape it, and you have 12 other bathrooms you can use. The bathroom has other cool features. Excuse me, the mansion has other cool features like a retractable rooftop, but perhaps what explains the price gap between what the mansion cost to build and what Mr. Russell paid for is the fact that he's neighbor to Tom Hanks. That'll cost you. Now, if you bought the stock, well, you're down a cool, let's say, 76% from the top. Not bad. Next, what about Etsy? Well, CEO Josh Silverman dumped about $105 million worth of stock. On the other hand, if you bought the stock at the top, well, you're down about 59%. About Teladoc, well, the CEO Glenn Tolman dumped over $179 million last year. On the other hand, you, and by you, we mean Mama Kathy Wood once again. If you bought at the top, you're down about 80%. How about Snapchat? Well, CEO Evan Spiegel dumped over $185 million last year, and he used some of that cash to buy a $100 million mansion. And of course, Mr. Spiegel has a high-maintenance wife. She used to be a Victoria's Secret model. That'll cost you an arm and a leg. A lot of spending, because if you don't, another billionaire is going to scoop her up. So he has to spend over and over and over again. So expect a lot of selling here from Mr. Spiegel. The good news is she's getting older. And the older she gets, a few more babies to pop. And she becomes low maintenance once again. And I know I just lost the three ladies who watch the show on a regular basis. But hey, I did not make the rules. I just play by the rules. Matter of fact, my wife is older than I am. So I don't have a problem with age. But you know who does? It's the big man upstairs. He made the rules. You can get mad at him. Matter of fact, let's cancel God. How about we give him a hashtag me too. Let's see if he goes away. And by the way, let's pause here and talk about the big man upstairs. Because when I make these videos, I tape them, I edit them, I release them, and goodbye. I don't even listen to them. I just read the comments and that's it. I mean, I don't want to listen to myself stumbling and mumbling all over the place, mispronouncing stuff. It's embarrassing. Meanwhile, the big man upstairs, well, he's watching this freak show from above. The show that he wrote, he directed. And he produced, and he knows the ending of the freak show. Yet he's sitting up there with a big bag of popcorn, smile ear to ear, watching how the freak show is unfolding. You want to talk about narcissism? Look no further than the big man upstairs. And you know what they say. The big man upstairs came down to earth in the form of a human being. He was 33, a nice hippie guy who preached love, forgiveness, peace, smoking pot. And I say, really? If the big man upstairs ever come down here, it'd be a 23 years old douchebag named Chad posing in a shirtless mirror selfie. Anyways, perhaps we lost nine more viewers now. This is blasphemy, bro. How dare you talk about God this way? Relax. God is a big boy. He can take it. And if he's mad at me, may he choke me to death right now. <coughs> Anyways, back to the dumping. It did not stop with Evan Spiegel when it comes to Snapchat. We also have Robert Murphy, who I believe to be the CFO of Snapchat. Well, he dumped about $185 million worth of stock last year. On the other hand, you. Had you bought the stock at the top, well, you went down about 70%. The stock recovered a little bit after that, but you're still down big. What about PayPal? CEO Daniel Shulman dumped over $81.5 million last year. On the other hand, if you bought the stock at the top, well, you went down 67%. Uh-oh. What about Roku? CEO Tony Wood dumped over $701 million last year. On the other hand, you, and by you, we mean Mama Kathy Wood once again. Well, you went down 79%. What about Palantir? 
one of the retail crowd favorite names. Remember the pumpers of Palantir? Palantir is the future, bro. Alex Karp, he knows. You're just a boomer. You don't know anything. What do you know? Well, Alex Karp, he knew you were right about that part because he dumped $862 million worth of shares last year. Wow. On the other hand, you, if you bought the stock at the top, well, you went down a cool 76%. Lastly, what about Moderna? CEO Stephanie Bensel, well, he dumped $275 million worth of stock last year. On the other hand, had you bought the stock at the top, you went down 72.5%. And of course, Stephanie Bensel, the CEO, after he dumped hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Moderna stock, he deleted his Twitter account and he said, perhaps the thing is over now. Goodbye. Thank you so much. But not so fast because Dr. Bill Gates, who didn't even finish college, but somehow he's an authority on healthcare and medical issues. Well, Dr. Gates says the next thing is just around the corner. And I assume that Mr. Gates is cooking the next thing. Anyways, let's move on to insider trading. There's a difference between insider selling. We just talked about that. But there was also insider trading, which is a criminal activity, meaning you got insider knowledge, insider information that could move stocks up or down. You use that information to trade accordingly by buying a stock or dumping a stock. This is, of course, a criminal behavior unless you work at D.C., in the brothel of D.C., Congress, Senate, then you're good to go. No problem. You can use the insider knowledge, the insider information that you get from classified briefings and you trade accordingly. And the biggest insider trading, the face of insider trading within our government is Nancy Pelosi. Recently, Nancy bought Disney, Google, and Roblox call options. Thankfully, Roblox crashed, so uh, here's one for you, Nancy. But listen to her smug response when she was asked about insider trading. Take a listen. Um, Madam Speaker, uh, Insider just completed a five-month investigation finding mm -hmm. that 49 members of Congress and 182 senior congressional staffers have violated the Stock Act, um, the Insider Trading Law. I'm wondering if you have any reaction to that. And secondly, should members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks while serving in Congress? No, I don't know to the second one. Um, any, uh, we have a responsibility to report in the stock, uh, on the stock, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that five month review. But if uh, people aren't reporting, they should be. Why but, why yeah. Because uh, this is a free market, and people, we are a free market economy, they should be able to participate. In Folks, we have a culture of gambling in DC. All of these politicians, your beloved politicians that you vote for, of course, every single year, when they're not on TV pretending that they work for you, they're gambling in the stock market, buying stocks, trading options. Matter of fact, look at Nancy Pelosi on her phone. You know what that Secret Service guy's looking at? What he's thinking right now? Oh, she's watching the Maverick of Wall Street again. And Nancy, if you're watching, here's one to you. And look at your beloved Congress members. They're all invested in Apple. No wonder why we don't have any regulations against the monopoly of the App Store. Likewise, the Senate, all of them own Apple shares. Again, you think they're going to crack down against Apple? Of course not. And instead of getting mad about this criminal behavior that your politicians are not doing their job, they're actually gambling in the stock market. They punish a parody account on Twitter, the Nancy Portfolio Tracker. That's banned now, not the actual criminal. And of course, the SEC, with all of what we talked about, the insiders dumping, the market is right now a Ponzi scheme. It is uninvestable. It is a jungle with preys and predators all over the place. The SEC has been in a coma by design, of course. And now we have Gary Ginsler, the head of the SEC, says... Oh, I'm proposing, I'm asking, I'm researching, I'm calling for, I want to crack down on insider sales and insider trading. Hey, Gary, you got the job and you failed at your job. The crime already happened. Your response is already too late. What a joke of a system we have. And of course, the take of all of this, folks, is the following. Remember when they say, follow the rules, pay your taxes, obey the law, work hard, and you'll make it in this country. Bullshit. Couldn't be further than the truth. You want to make it in this country, create an entity. Doesn't matter if it's a real company or a fake company. I mean, look at Peloton. It's a bike with an iPad. They made that into a company and they sold it as the new Netflix. The new revolution in home fitness. Oh, really? 
and you lure the public, the sheep out there, the dumb money, to buy your stock. That stock goes higher. You dump at the top. Now you're richer than ever. And goodbye. Who cares what happens to the company? Who cares if the sheep get slaughtered? But if that's too complicated for you, you might say, hey, Maverick, I don't know how to start a company. That's, that, that's out of my league, out of my pay grade. Tell me something else. Well, you can start an OnlyFans account. You can sell dirty feet pictures. That'll make you a millionaire. And if that doesn't work out, you might say, hey, Maverick, I lost a thumb. I don't know. There's no fans out there for a dirty feet with four fingers. Okay, no problem. How about you fought in a jar? And you sell that for thousands of dollars. That could work. Instead of working hard, obeying the law, paying your taxes, all of that bullshit, just fart in a jar. You might say, oh, I can't fart in a jar. I only have about four farts a day. You don't even have to actually fart in a jar. You can sell the farts in a jar as an NFT. If that doesn't work out, look between the couch. Specifically in grandpa's house, if you are in a European company, country, excuse me, because the value of the German douche mark, and the Italian lira and all of these old currencies, well, the value is surging higher. That could make you rich. And if all of that doesn't work out, how about this? We hijack a rocket from SpaceX, Elon Musk, or Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin. We hijack the rocket, we grab a bunch of ladders from Home Depot, and we grab the asteroid. You know, the asteroid that is worth $4.7 billion. Boom, you're rich. Anyways, folks, I'm done here. This is all I got for you for this video. But rest assured, I have another video coming in a few hours. So stick around. The Maverick of Wall Street will be back, baby. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Press the like button. Subscribe, share. You know the deal. And I'll talk to you again soon.